Okay, today we will finish up the swap function. So inside the file called tick.so, you'll first finish the function called cross. When we do a swap and a tick is crossed, we'll call this function called cross and update some variables. This function is going to take four inputs, a mapping from int24 to, to info. Info stores the information about this current tick. So this will be a mapping. It's going to take in the current tick and it's going to take in some variables that are needed to calculate the fees. Fee growth global 0x128 and 1x128. And it's going to return a number called liquidity net. This number is used to update the current liquidity. Okay, first we'll get the info by typing info storage since we're updating this. Let's call this info equals self at tick. Now when a tick is crossed, we need to update the fees. So what we're going to do is update this two fields called fee growth outside 0x128 and fee growth outside 1x128. Why are we updating this? I'll discuss this in another video. So going back down, what we're going to do is update fee growth outside 0 and 1x128. So say info dot fee growth outside 0x128 is equal to, every time a tick is crossed, we'll update fee growth outside 0x128 to be the current fee growth global 0x128 minus the current info dot fee growth outside 0x128. And why are we doing this? Again, I'll discuss this in another video. So say fee growth global 0x128 minus the current fee growth outside info dot fee growth outside 0x128. And we'll do the same for fee growth outside 1x128. Change a one here, change a one here, and change this to a one. And for the last step, we'll return liquidity net, which will be the current liquidity net stored inside info. So say liquidity net is equal to info dot liquidity net. Okay, so that completes the function cross. We'll be calling this function inside the swap function when a tick is crossed. Okay, so let's go back to our clamp contract. And I'm inside the swap function, and we're finishing up the code inside the while loop. So inside this while loop, we're doing the single swap from a tick to another tick. At the end of each iteration of this while loop, we'll either need to call the function tick.cross that we just wrote, or update the current tick. If the current square root price x96 after the swap is equal to the next square root price x96, so this square root price next x96 is the price for the next tick, when these are equal, then we know that the swap caused the current tick to cross over to the next tick. So inside here, what we'll need to do is call the function tick.cross. So I'll say if step.initialized, initialized, then we'll call the function ticks.cross. And for the tick, we'll pass in the next tick, step.tick next. Since the current square root price x96 and the next square root price x96 are equal, in this case, the current tick must be equal to the next tick. So here, that's why we're passing tick next. Okay, the next inputs are fee growth global 0x128 and 1x128. Now, if we're doing a trade from 041, 041, then for the fee growth global, we'll need to pass in the fee growth global that is tracked by the state. Since we're doing a swap from 041, token 0 is coming in, and fees are accrued on token in. So here, we'll pass the fee state dot fee growth global 0x128. This should be fee growth global x128. Otherwise, if the trade is a 140, then fee growth global 0x128 does not change. So we'll pass the state variable fee growth global 0x128. Okay. And likewise, if this trade was a 041, again, fee is taken out from token in. Token in is token 0. So there's no fee on token 1. Since there's no fee on token 1, if it is a 0 for 1 trade, then we'll pass fee growth global 1x128. This is the state variable. Otherwise, if this trade was a 140, this means token 1 is coming in and token 0 is going out. So we're collecting fee from token 1, so we'll be passing state that fee growth global x128. Okay, calling the function ticks.cross will return liquidity net. Liquidity net is int128 liquidity net is equal to. Okay, once we have liquidity net, the next step is to update the current liquidity. 
Now recall from our previous video that depending on the direction of the trade, we need to either add a plus or a minus to this liquidity net. So say if 0, 4, 1, then we'll say liquidity net is equal to minus liquidity net. The way to remember this is if the trade swings the price to the right, then liquidity net should be positive. On the other hand, if the trade moves the price to the left, then we add a minus to liquidity net. When we do a trade for 0, 4, 1, then the price decrease. So the price moves to the left, so we put a minus here. Okay, the last step is to update the current liquidity. So say state dot liquidity is equal to. Now liquidity net can be either be positive or negative. So we'll say liquidity is this less than zero. If it is to state dot liquidity, we'll minus and then cast liquidity net into uint128, uint128 minus liquidity net. Otherwise, we'll say state dot liquidity plus uint128 cast liquidity net into uint128. Okay, the last step is to update the current tick. So say state dot tick is equal to. Now we'll need to handle two cases whether the trade is a 0 for 1 or not. If 0 for 1, 0 for 1. Now going back up, going back up to here. When we're doing a 0 for 1 trade, next initialize tick within one word. For tick next, it may return the current tick. So what we need to do over here is make sure that the next tick is less than the current tick by saying step dot tick next. So this tick next right now may be equal to the current tick. So to make sure that it is less than the current tick, we'll do a minus one. Otherwise, if it is a one for zero trade, then we know that the next tick is greater than the current tick. So say the next tick is step dot tick next. Okay, so this completes the condition when after the swap, the current square root price x96 is equal to the next square root price x96. Let's handle the other case. So say else if state dot square root price x96 is not equal to the next one. Over here, we know that the current square root price x96 is not equal to the next square root price x96. So here we don't have to check with the next square root price x96. However, we should check with the square root price x96 that was set at the beginning of the swap. So say step dot square root price start x96. What we're checking here is that we're making sure that the current price changed a little bit. Then we'll say state dot tick. We'll recompute the current tick. Tick math dot get tick that square root ratio state dot square root price x96. Okay, and that completes the function swap. Let's try compiling the contract. I'll open my terminal and type forge build. Okay, I'll go fix this error. Line four or five. Line four or five. I'll need to change this to a colon. And I also don't need this comma. And I also need a semicolon here. I also need a semicolon here. This should be initialized. Okay, going back, let's try compiling the contract again. Okay, and our contract compiled. Okay, so that completes the swap function. Starting from the next video, I'll start explaining how the fee is calculated in Uniswap B3.